drug deal. the traditional story of teenage rebellion. <laughs> I did not do anything wrong in high school. My parents didn't even set a curfew for me because there wasn't really a point. <laughs> I wasn't going to do anything wrong. <laughs> so I finally, it's the summer, I'm in Chicago, I'm away, um, living by myself, and I decide that like, yeah, I think I want to get high. So I think about it for about a month. <laughs> and then I tell one of my friends, and I'm like, hey, I want to get high. So like, it's, it's solidified and I have to do it. So she's like, okay, I'll help you out, but like, you need to get the weed. So I text a friend and I'm like, you live around here, like, can you help us out? And she, like, the plans fall through. So then a girl at work is like, I just did Molly. And I'm like, oh, if you just said that you did Molly, then you can probably get me weed, right? <laughs> so I ask her and she's like, yeah, I'll look into it. And like a week later, she texts me and she's like, Oh, do you want to split an eighth for twenty dollars each? And I, I checked my other friend. I'm like, is is this a good price? I don't know. <laughs> and so I te and she texts me back. She's like, yeah. So I text her. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> and she says, okay. Like, meet me after work. It's gonna take an hour round trip, and we'll like, go and get it. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Like an hour, no big deal. So I meet her. We like get on the blue line. We take it out, and then we have to catch a bus. And we're, we're on the bus, and I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay. Like, when are we getting off? And she's like, on the 20th stop, and I'm like, the 20th stop? <laughs> What's the name? The bus doesn't stop at all the stops. And she's like, I, I don't know. So this nice woman like tells us where, helps us figure out where we have to get off. But then she gets off, and we get off at the wrong stop. So we're like walking down the street, and I start to realize because Crizia, the girl I went with, hasn't told me where we're going. She won't give me the address, and I realize from looking at her face that. She doesn't know where we're going really either. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, how do you know this guy? Like, whoever we're buying from, she's like, um, his name is Tan. Maybe it's Tan, I'm really not sure. It's L T A N, but like, my dealer's in South America, so I suggest that this guy who's a friend of a friend, I'm like, okay, that's great. So we're like walking down the street, cookie cutter neighborhood, and then I see the house, and I'm like, Oh, this is definitely the house. Like the windows are broken, and you can tell it's very dilapidated. And so we go up and we like knock on the door, and this guy opens the door, and he's not wearing a shirt, and he has like money coming out. <laughs> like his waistband. He's like a teenager, and Chrissy goes, "Uh, is this like Tom?" And he says, "No, Tom's not here. He's at work." And shuts the door in her face. So we're standing there, and Tom, and I'm like, "What are we?" supposed to do and so she tries to call Tan but the neighbors are staring at us and like we need to move <laughs> like come and get us so we walk away and then Tan picks up his phone and he's like oh I'll be there in 15 minutes I have to get off work <laughs> so we walk around and we finally get back and there's like this kid sitting on the car hood with this other girl and I'm like I think that's him and so Chrissy doesn't hear me, so she calls him, and so the kid picks up the phone, and it is him. So we like go over, and he's like, oh, where's your car? Like, we need to go drive and get the weed. And I'm like, no, we don't have a car. We took public transportation to get here. And so, like, we get in their car, and this is a problem because, one, I thought we were getting the weed from Todd, not getting it from someone else. And I've always thought, don't get in cars with strangers. And this is cars with two doors, so I'm trapped in the back seat. <laughs> Yeah, because we like get in, I put on my seatbelt, I'm like, it's gonna be okay, like, I'm wearing my seatbelt. <laughs> but of course, like, Tom goes speeding off, the music is blasting, and like, I, all I can do is feel the vibrations of the car, and I'm like looking out the window, trying to act cool, but I like can't see where I'm going, and I like want to track where I'm going, but I don't know. So finally, we pull up into this neighborhood, we haven't been pulled over, Tom gets out, goes into this house, we're sitting in the car, and I like, can't hear anything because my ears are ringing. Tom comes back out and he has like a blunt in his mouth and like hand this is like a saran wrap package of weed. And we're like, here's the cash. And he's like, where do you need to go back to? And we're like, the blue line? Because we need to get home. And he's like, okay, like, we'll, we'll take you back. We have to get there. And, or we have to go somewhere nearby. And we're like, great. And I'm like, thank you so much. He's actually a nice guy. We're just going to work out. And he like turns on the car and turns on the music. And he's like, we don't want to get caught. And I was like, Good. So we make a stop because they have to pick some stuff up for wherever they're going and they have these like heavy plastic bags and I can't see what's in the bags until they come back to the car. 
And then Tom like sits down, and his girlfriend sits down, and he pulls out a can and he pops it open, and it's twisted tea. And then he starts to drive, and I'm in the back seat freaking out, I'm like, oh my God, he's drinking and driving. <laughs> I know I just went on a drug deal, <laughs> but all I wanted to do was buy some weed, and I really don't want to die. <laughs> so <laughs> then I like reassure myself, and I'm like, it's gonna be okay. Like, he can't process the alcohol this fast. He's really close to the blue line and I'm going to, like, live. And they end up dropping us off near the blue line and, like, we, like, get out. And I didn't really, it didn't really hit me until, like, I got back to my apartment that night. And I was like, I had to choose a lot of times that this is actually what I wanted to do. And I had to, like, consciously choose to break the law. So does it really count if it's rebellion if I had to keep choosing it? <laughs>